To find out more about the series, please visit our website at virgilkaylock.uk. The Strange Tales of Virgil Kaylock. Waterhall. Chapter One. Hello? Hello? It is true to say that we are the only species on Earth that is capable of envisioning our own death. Yet, of course, we choose not to. We look away. It terrifies us. The reality of death is as palpable as it is inevitable. It is the dark star around which we orbit. Its gravity pulling us inexorably closer with each inevitable revolution until the final circumgyration drags us into oblivion and our longed-for release. That is, if release it be. Hello? On my return from the Arctic, the museum, alarmed by my appearance and my mental state, sent me home on leave to recuperate. I closed the door and did not open it for some time. It seemed to me that if I were to walk back out into the world, some new calamity would befall me. I became reclusive. I saw no one. Mrs. Cummings kindly deposited provisions outside the door to my room and left me in peace. Dorothy sent me postcards, but I did not answer them. What was the point? I had finally understood that she did not, or could not, love me. My only contact with the outside world was a wireless, an Atwater Kent Model 21 two-valve regular in a solid wood case with a 14-inch horn speaker. Hello? Radios at that time were uncommon. Broadcasts were infrequent and required dedicated time spent in the art of tuning. Can you hear me? Hello? What do you want? Do you want to tell me something? Do you want to speak with me? What is your name? Virgil? Virgil, it's me. Open the door. Virgil? You can't stay holed up in there forever. Hiding won't help. Open the door. Virgil. How did you get in? Oh, you're alive. Mrs Cummings let me in. How do you think? Why are you behaving like a crazy hermit? Look, I don't know what happened to you up there in the Arctic, but I think you should talk about it. Do you want to tell me about it? Virgil? Virgil. Well, if you won't open the door, I may as well go. I tried. I failed. Bye. I'm going now. Goodbye, Virgil. All right. Look. If you won't let me in, then meet me somewhere else. I'll wait outside, all right? I'll wait across the road. And don't leave me standing there. It's cold. I'll see you at Lyons. What? I'll see you at Lyons Corner House. Half an hour. Lions, good. Right then. See you there. I had not seen a soul for at least three weeks. The world outside was noisy, brash and bright, and I wanted no part of it. But Dorothy had asked to see me, and so I came. You look terrible. Thanks. You might have shaved. Look, you can't hide from life, you know. It happens whether you like it or not. Tea? Please. I got us some sandwiches, too. Food is a human necessity, actually. Hungry? Yes, I suppose so. Well, that's good. At least you're eating. Are you ill? I don't think so. Good, because melancholia is easily put right. How? All you need is something to do. I don't need help. Virgil, you are sad and sick, and if you don't get out of your flat soon, you'll turn to slime. How's things with you? Fine, don't change the subject. If you won't pull yourself together, I'll write to your father. Please don't do that. Why wouldn't you let me in? The flat's a mess. I might have... Let things go somewhat. So tell me, what's wrong with you? Nothing. Oh, really? It's my world that's wrong. Oh, it's 
the same world for everyone. Is it? Of course it is. You know it isn't. You're feeling sorry for yourself. Of course I am. I'm cursed. It's why you have so little to do with me. Ungrateful. I'm here, aren't I? I just wanted to stop. I just want to close the door and stay away from it all. And how's that going? There's someone talking to me on my wireless. What? A voice on the radio. I don't understand. That's what radios do. No, it's not a broadcast. Radios are supposed to talk to you. It's their job. This is different. You're hearing things. It's a girl. She sounds young. Sometimes she's singing, sometimes she just talks. Well, it's interference. It really isn't. Turn it off. I can't. Look, Virgil. Yes, I know how it sounds. It's insane. It's unlikely. You've been alone for too long. Will you come and listen? And what does she say? It's not clear. I can't hear her clearly. It it won't take long. Arthur something. What? When I wrote the piece on the spiritualist, a chap got in touch to tell me that he spoke to ghosts on the wireless. So it's actually a thing. It's deranged, but a thing. What was his name? Arthur... um... something. Will you come? Well, you wouldn't let me in a moment ago. Give me 20 minutes to clean it up. I can't come now. I'm going home. Right. Sorry. No, it's fine. Look, I I can come tomorrow, after work. How's that? That would be good, thanks. Dorothy left, and as I had no desire to return to my self-imposed incarceration, I began to walk. Night was falling. The streets were filling up with workers leaving their jobs and heading for the omnibuses and the underground. I walked in step with the crowds. I had no destination. I was drifting with the shoal of humanity, swimming in the sea of the ordinary and the routine, each brow furrowed by the complexities of life, the personal dilemmas and private tragedies that are unique and yet the same for us all. But as the crowds dispersed, and the streets emptied. I stood alone and apart. I was not one of them. Though we looked the same, I was different. The walls of my world were paper thin and torn, and the darkness had seeped in. All Saints Church was a Gothic fantasy crammed between buildings on either side. A tall spire pointed up to heaven and away from a conflicted and imperfect earth. As my eyes grew accustomed to the dark interior, I became aware of the explosion of colour. Every surface was painted or gilded, friezes depicting scenes from the Old Testament, stained glass windows narrating the life of Christ, and a high vaulted ceiling describing the glories of heaven. The building seemed to me to be an unruly and frantic cry for help. A small congregation had collected near the altar. Kneeling and bowed, they mumbled along as the cleric before them intoned the creed. Here was humanity seeking a helping hand from a remote and invisible God. I wanted to join them. I wanted to crouch in the dark, begging for the end of death, the cessation of evil, and the release from terror. But I... I did not. And I could not. I needed comfort. God knows I did. I needed guidance and reassurance, but... But I was not like them. The meek, in greedy anticipation of their longed-for inheritance. I did not feel his presence. I did not feel the joy of his promise. I felt nausea. I felt revolted. I felt rage. And with the Lord's prayer in my ears, I turned on my heels and fled. I thought you were going to tidy up. I have. How can you live like this? In an effort to hide the misery and chaos of my life, I had crammed clothes, books and newspapers into cupboards and drawers, along with unwashed cups and plates. The window was opened for the first time in weeks. I wanted Dorothy's company... But I did not want her pity. Please sit down. Do you want tea? No. It's so cramped. I really think you need something larger. It's temporary. It's been temporary for years. What do you do in here, all on your own? Glass of water? No, thanks. Oh. Dorothy sat in the armchair next to the radio set and tilted her head like an inquisitive puppy. Is this it? Yes, it's American. Two valves. Expensive? Yes. It's quite a piece. Thanks. I want one. The knob gave a satisfying click, and as electricity suffused the machine, 
The valves began to hum and glow. Isn't it beautiful? All the tiny little lights, like a little city at night time. It takes a while to warm up. Let me, um, move this for you. I turned the speaker horn towards her. Listen. I can hear music. Oh, hang on, I've got the BBC Times here. It's, um, that's the Vagabond King, Grosvenor Opera Orchestra in Birmingham. Oh, really? How lovely. It doesn't happen when there's a programme on. It only happens in between when there's no broadcasts. Now it's just hiss. No, wait. Well, I can't hear anything, can you? No, wait. It doesn't happen all the time, just sometimes. I can't hear anything. It probably won't happen now. Wait, did you hear that? No. Well, I can't hear anything. No, nothing. My advice to you is to get out of here and go outside. There's a world happening just outside your door. Have you seen the new buses? Double-deckers, they call them. There's nothing there. Virgil, turn it off. Just wait. I'm not waiting anymore. I have to get going. Turn it off, go outside, do something. Go back to work. It's not good to be holed up imagining things. Shh! There. Can you hear it? No. There, listen. Do you hear it? It's a girl singing. Is that it? No, wait. Sometimes she speaks. It's just a broadcast. It's a children's programme. Children's hour is broadcast between five and six. Well, then it's some sort of test signal. Shh! shh don't shush me. Sorry. Hello? Can you hear me? What's your name? Hello? What are you doing? You heard it. She's there. It's just a radio. Please wait for a moment. Well, she's gone now. Please. Hello? Hello? What's your name? Can you hear me? What's your name? What do you want? Virgil, you're talking to the radio. Shh, there. Did you hear that? Do you want to talk to me? What's your name? Who are you? Hello? She's gone. Good. Well, at least you heard her. No, I didn't. She said hello. You just heard no, it. No, I didn't. I heard a nursery rhyme and some random noise. But she said... Virgil, you can hear anything you like in random patterns. I can promise you that I get more than random patterns. Well, then, that's odd, but there will be some ordinary explanation. Like what? I don't know. A little girl found her father's radio set. Radio sets can't transmit signals. You need specialist equipment. Well, like I say, it's a test signal. Why do you need to make such a big event out of it? I don't know. I think she wants to talk to me. And who is she? I think... I don't know. You think it's a ghost? I don't know. Virgil, I've got to go. I'll see you soon. My advice to you is turn it off and try and find your way back to normal life. There's no such thing. Not for me, at any rate. It's fine. I'm fine. Go, if you have to. <gasps> oh, my God. Hello? Hello? Who are you? Are you all right? Hello? What's your name? Where are you? Hello? Where are you? Where are you? Are you all right? What does she say? I'm not sure. Listen to me. Can you tell me where you are? Look around you. What do you see? We want to help you, but you must tell us where you are. Where are you? Listen, we're coming to find you, all right? Just tell us where you are. Who is coming? My name's Kitty. What's she saying? Is that your name? Kitty? It's so Kitty? Kitty? Who is Martha Gray? Where are you, Kitty? What's Water Hall? Is Martha Gray your friend? <laughs> tell us where you are. We want to help you, but you must tell us where you are. Are you at home? No, but where are you, Kitty?
Who is he? What's Water Hall? Where's that? Who's coming? Who's coming? Tell us, tell us who's coming. Who is it, Kitty? Hello? Hello? We heard nothing more. We tried repeatedly, but there was just a wall of interference. Poor child. She didn't tell us anything. We don't know anything. We don't know who she is. I really don't think she could hear us. We were just shouting at a radio. What's Waterhall? No idea. The girls of Waterhall? Is it a school? Perhaps. Well, she's terrified, that's clear. She's just a child. Whoever she is, wherever she is, we must find her. In Waterhall, Chapter 1, by John Ram, Virgil Kaylock was played by Nicholas Bolton. The young Kaylock, Daniel Fraser. Dorothy Bell, Ellie Turner. Miss Blythe, Maggie Olerenshaw. And Kitty Cooper was played by Jennifer English. The music was composed and performed by Neil Brand. The Strange Tales of Virgil Kaylock are produced by Richard Varman, Martin Malone and John Ram and are supported using lottery funding by the National Lottery through Arts Council England. It is a Kaylock production. To find out more about the series, please visit our website at virgilkaylock.uk.